We are now going to see the Andersonian faults, how they plot in the stereo net. I will be explaining slowly and covering the basics of stereo plot also in the process so that all these students can understand. So I start with Andersonian reverse fault. I have made a sketch, I have drawn a cuboid and I have drawn in such a manner that the two blue diagonals 1 and 2, suppose they are the conjugate reverse faults. So the reverse fault symbols are given over here. It has already been explained on the green board that in such a situation and when with the consideration of the principal stress axis sigma 1 more than or equal to sigma 2, sigma 2 more than equal to sigma 3. In that case, the intersection between the two faults 1 and 2 is given by the sigma 2 stress axis. Since fault 1 and fault 2 are conjugate, which we will also see in the stereo net, we will find that the intersection between 1 and 2, these two faults, is a straight line which is horizontal. Essentially, sigma 2 line is the strike line of plane 1, fault plane 1 and fault plane 2. Again, in another words, this line sigma 2 axis is parallel to this horizontal line, this horizontal line, etc. The sigma 1 axis in this case is vertical and the sigma 3 axis in this case is horizontal so that this relationship is maintained. Sigma 1 is perpendicular to sigma 2 and sigma 2 is perpendicular to the sigma 3 stress axis. And sigma 2 and sigma 3 axis are horizontal, sigma 1 as I said is vertical. The sigma 3 principal stress axis is along the deep direction of fault plane 1 or I can if I extend in this direction and think sigma 3 axis is along the deep direction of fault plane 2. Now I will take certain values. Imagine for this fault plane 1, this is the data of attitude. 20 degree is the strike of this fault plane 1, 26 degrees is the deep direction of this fault and 110 degree is the deep direction of plane 1. So, if 20 degree is one direction of the strike line, the other direction will be 20 degree plus 180 degree which is 200 degree. Here essentially I am calling these angles 20 degree, 200 degree and 26 degree etc. with respect to geographic north and measured in a clockwise direction. So, now let us look at the problems. Plot fault plane 1 as a great circle, plot fault plane 2 as a great circle in the stereo net, plot the poles of fault plane 1 and fault plane 2 and then plot sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 principal stress axis in case of this Andersonian reverse fault. I have taken an equal area net also known as a Schmidt net and here the north, south, east and west directions are marked. On this I am superposing a tracing sheet. Now my first job will be to mark the outer circle with a pencil. So I have finished drawing. My next job is to mark the north, south, east, west direction on the tracing sheet. North, east, south and then west. Then mark the center 
on the tracing sheet. Before initiating any stereonet related problems, always draw this outer circle, mark north, south, east and west and mark the center. In some stereonet exercises you will find they put a pin over here and with respect to that pin they keep rotating the tracing sheet. The other alternate is you rotate and you will see how I am handling without using any pin. Now recollect the data set, fault plane 1 has 20 degree strike and the other direction is 200 degree. So this 20 and 200 I will mark on the stereo net. This is 10 degree and this is 10, 20 and I write here 20 degree. I am doing slowly so that everyone can understand. The other is 200 from north to east is 90 degree east to south another 90 so here is 180 degree then this is 190 degree and over here I write here 200 degree. So what have I marked 20 degree 200 degree is the strike of the plane. Also recollect that 110 degree is the deep direction. So where is 110 degree here north is 0 east is 90 this is 100 and this is 110 degrees. So, I can write here this is the deep direction, this is the strike and that is the strike. Deep direction has to be 90 degree apart from the strike. So, this angle is 90 degree and 110 to 200 is also 90 degree. The other possible deep direction for this specific strike would have been in this direction that means 180 degree opposite to 110 degree in that direction that is not given. So again let us confirm 20 degree 200 degree is the strike 20 and 200 then 110 degree is the deep direction which has been plotted. Next thing I need to plot or use is the 26 degree is the deep amount. Now let us see how to do it. Keeping the center of the tracing sheet and the center of the stereo net intact, I have to rotate only the tracing sheet keeping the stereo net which is printed on the paper this one static. I have to bring this 110 degree with the east of the stereo net. So that is what I am doing, I have rotated. In the course of rotation I find that this periphery, peripheral circle has little bit shifted because of my rotational mistake. So I try to adjust as much as possible. Now you can see that this peripheral circle drawn on the tracing sheet is almost superposed on the peripheral circle in the stereo net and this 110 degree in the tracing sheet has come to the east of the stereo net. Now I have to move inside same amount as the deep amount. This is 10 degree, this is another 10, 20 degree. Then each small grid circle is indicating 2 degree change. So 22, 24 and 26. So what I have done this distance indicating 26 degree and this is the deep direction. Now I have to draw a grid circle passing through this point and the strike which is 200 degree and at the other side it is 20 degree. So what I have drawn now if I bring the knot of the tracing sheet back and superposed with the knot of the stereo net, center of the tracing sheet matched with the center of the stereo net, south, east, west all are matched. What I have drawn? is my fault plane 1. So I can write here fault plane 1 has been drawn. 
Now let us come back to the question. Plot fault plane was as a great circle I have done. Next question is I can plot the pole of fault plane 1. So, to do that maintain the center superposed and orient the great circle representing the fault plane with north south of the studio net. And from here now I can come back. So, this point is the pole of the fault plane 1. I can write it as simply 1. Next I come to the other questions. Plot fault plane 2 as a great circle. Fault plane 1's attitude was given, it was drawn. Fault plane 2's attitude is not given. It is only said that fault plane 2 is conjugate to the Andersonian fault plane 1 and fault plane 1 is a reverse fault. This information is given. As you see in the diagram, both fault plane 1 and fault plane 2 have the same strike line. So, that means in my case fault plane 2 will also have 20 degree strike and here 200 degree. These two remains fixed. Next observation, we can see that in the diagram the fault plane 2's dip direction which is in this direction is 180 degree opposite to fault plane 1's dip direction which is this way. 180 degree opposite means what in this case? If this is the dip direction then I have to join a line draw join this point this point center move straight and reach the other side and want to see where the straight line intersects the outer circle that point has to be obtained or in other words 110 degree dip direction plus 180 degree I have to add up which is 290 degree. North is 0 degree, East is 90 degree, South is 180 degree, West is 270 degree, then 280 degree and 290 degree. So, this is the deep direction of fault plane 2. As per this diagram and as per the definition of conjugate planes, fault plane 2's deep amount and fault plane 1's deep amount are the same. So, what can I write about the fault plane 2's attitude? It has the same strike 20 degree dash 200 degree measured with respect to north in clockwise direction. Its deep amount is 26 degree and the deep direction is 110 degree plus 180 degree which is 290 degree. This is to be drawn. Strike is already marked 290 degree is marked already over here. Now I have to take care of this 26 degree and draw the fault plane 2. Let us do that. So, to use the deep amount 26 degree again I bring this 20 degree and 200 degree strike matching with north south of the stereo net. See I rotate the tracing sheet and I bring 20 degree at the north and 200 degree at the south. I ensure that the center of the tracing sheet and the center of the stereo net are superposed. I further ensure that the line drawn on the tracing sheet is matching with the periphery of the stereo net. 290 is brought to the west of the stereo net. Where is west? Have a look. This is the west and now after superposing 290 degree has come over here. So, now let us move 26 degree inside towards the center. This is 10 degree, this is 20 degree, 22, 24 and 26. So, this line if I draw and if I write here 26 degree, then this 26 degree indicates 
the dip of fault plane 2. Next what to do? Join this point, this point and that point by a great circle and at this position we can indeed see a great circle. So, I have drawn the great circle and it represents what? It represents the fault plane 2. So, now you can clearly see that this is fault plane 1 and its conjugate fault plane is also being drawn. Both of them are dipping same amount 26 degree, their dip directions are 180 degree opposite to each other. For fault plane 1 the dip direction is 110 degree, for fault plane 2 the dip direction is 290 degree and we note that 110 degree plus 180 degree is equal to 290 degree. So, they are 180 degree opposite to each other. Same strike, same dip amount and 180 degree opposite dip direction. So, the Andersonian reverse faults fault plane 1 and fault plane 2 have been drawn. Then what was the thing to be done? Plot the pole, FP 1's pole is already drawn, I am going to plot the pole of FP 2. This is FP 2, I want to draw its pole. To do that again I take 20 degree strike matching with the north of the stereo net. Once I give an anti-clockwise turn of the tracing sheet, so that this point moves over there. Naturally this point will move over here. You can see this turning. This 20 degree point is moving anti-clockwise and here this 200 degree this point is also moving anti-clockwise. I keep on rotating and rotating until this 20 degree is matched with the north of the tracing sheet then 200 degree automatically comes with the south of the tracing sheet. Centers are matched and the periphery is also matched. Okay. Now, we can proceed. From here, I have to move 90 degree inside. So, this is 2 and 4 plus 10, 14, 24, 34, 44, 54, 64, 74, 84, then 86, 88 and 90. So, I can call it 2.2 in 3D is actually a straight line which is the pole of fault plane 2, FP2. FP2 is a plane which is plotted as a great circle in stereo net and its pole is a straight line which is plotted as a point in the stereo net. If I remove the stereo net and you want to have a clear cut picture what has been done so far, this is the situation. Now what is our final question? We have to plot sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 principal stress axis with keeping in mind this diagram. What we see? Strike of as I told you strike of fault plane 2 is same as strike of fault plane 1 and that strike given by a straight line is itself the sigma 2 principal stress axis. So, where it will be there in the stereo net, this point giving 20 degree strike is my sigma 2 axis. This itself is a sigma 2 axis and the other direction of the strike it is over here 200 degree. So, this point is the sigma 2 axis. Let me try a position where both of them can be visible. Yes. So, it is over here sigma 2 and here you can see the arrow giving 20 degrees. So, sigma 2 principal stress axis has been plotted. Now, we have to plot the sigma 1 principal stress axis. Note this is the diagram. Sigma 1 is a vertical line and a vertical line is plotted at the center of the stereo net. This point at the center represents sigma 1 principal stress axis in this case when we have conjugate 
reverse faults being drawn. Now again I look at this figure, deep, along deep direction a horizontal line has been drawn sigma 3. It is a horizontal line, so sigma 3 must plot on the periphery of the stereo net. Where should it plot then? This point, maybe I use a color pen now. is the sigma 3 axis, see it is plotting on the periphery, so it is a horizontal line and it is along the deep direction. What is the other plot of sigma 3 over here? This is the plot of sigma 3 axis. So, we got if I make color now, this is sigma 2 this is sigma 2 and this is sigma 1. So, 3 have been plotted. We know that the principal stress axis are perpendicular to each other as per this diagram. As per this diagram, principal stress axis are perpendicular to each other. The angle between sigma 2 and sigma 3 is 90 degree. Is it maintained in our diagram? The answer is yes. from here up to there, this angle is 90 degree because remember this was the strike and that was the deep direction. Naturally between strike and deep direction there has to be 90 degree difference. And what about the other one here, check it carefully, this is 90 degree and again this angle is. 90 degree and this angle is also 90 degree. So, the angle between sigma 2 stress axis which is a horizontal line. So, two plots on the periphery sigma 3 axis which is also a horizontal line. So, two plots on the periphery and they are making 90 degree angle to each other just like think about two lines say this is sigma 2 axis then this is sigma 3 axis they are at 90 degree angle to each other. Now what about the angle between sigma 2 and sigma 1? We can understand easily because sigma 1 is a vertical line and therefore it is plotted at the center. The angle between any vertical line and a horizontal line is always 90 degree. So the angle between sigma 1 and sigma 2 here is 90 degree. The angle between sigma 1 and sigma 3 here is also 90 degree. In fact, any point plotted on the periphery which is a horizontal line angle between this line x and sigma 1 is also 90 degree. These are the very basic things I am covering in a way that students have no problem in translating the stress related issues in the stereo net exercises.